jewelry friends my name is Joey Balistrieri welcome to my work table I am back with another video and this time with two projects with the Softlex company's ugly sweater design challenge kit my first project that I did let's see if I have it here I do my first project that I did was fun and whimsical and jewelry not to be taken too seriously let me see i get my hand out of the way um it was just a delight to make this a simple stringing project a like um almost scarf like thing that can wrap around your neck kind of a festive take on a lariat necklace and i just had so much fun it is whimsy and as i said not to be taken too seriously it's quite lovely but it's not a super elegant piece of jewelry it is just fun 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 but in this in these two pieces i want to do a more elegant a little bit more polished version of the jewelry with the kit. So I have taken out five of the Mille Fiori little coin beads. I love Mille Fiori beads. Um, I've purchased them in Italy a couple times. I love them. I was thrilled to get these and thrilled to get them in red because a pop of red is going to be a really big trend going into the season and into 2025. I saved out one of them for the second project, which is going to be a really cool pendant that coordinates with this bracelet. And so what you see here is just a little flower toggle micro pave that I had in my stash. I just thought that the little flower would play nicely. Uh, Mille Fiori is Italian for um, thousand flowers. So um, I just thought it would play nice. A uh, little, you know, a little inside <laughs> joke, if you will. And then I guess I can touch this now. I have done a couple of special things to the charm. In the kit, there were two of these. And what I did is laid them out flat and I used my Permalac anti-tarnish coating on the inside because you can see inside and I didn't want it to darken and then I used E6000 glue and put a little dot of glue everywhere that the points of the two charms were touching and let me grab a little piece of wire here and I just made sure that my hole was clear and I glued those two um, poinsettia slash star charms together to make one really dimensional charm that is now two-sided. It's only been sitting up for about half an hour, so I want to let it rest and then I am going to put it back in a tray and brush the entire thing um, again with my anti-tarnish coating. So my bracelet design is going to be really fun, simple, simple stringing. In our kit, we got a spool of my favorite bead stringing wire, the 49 strand garnet color. So I have taken two bracelet links that are the same of this wire and let me get a clamp. Um, you can go ahead and crimp one side when you make a bracelet or you can clamp off one end and start your pattern and um, I do it both ways just depends on what I'm stringing and so this little pile of seed beads here is just from my stash these are 11 -0 um, these are uh, check seed beads 110, and these are um, uh, gold metallic. And let's see, any other information? Gold metallic. Um, I just put those out here because I'm going to be stringing two strands into one and back out to two through the whole thing and seed beads just make a great little spacer. Um, our kit had a little bit of gold but mostly silver but this little pinch bead mix that was in the kit actually had copper, gold, and red and gold is my favorite, gold and copper are my favorite so that's what I'm going to do is switch to an all gold. As I said, I'm hoping this will be a festive but a little bit more polished piece of jewelry, a pair, a set of jewelry actually. Um, so let's start by stringing a few seed beads. In fact, this um, end is not so crucial. I'm just going to put a couple on, but it's not so crucial because I'm going to do my stringing on the body of my bracelet and when I have about my approximate length I'll come to this end and make those length adjustments and then what I'm going to do is take um, let's see do I want to start with a Mille Fiori bead I think I'll start with my um, pinch beads so 
I'm going to put um, one red pinch bead. So kind of my idea is to do a little seed bead section. So on this strand, one seed bead and one red pinch bead. And on the second strand, I'm going to do three seed beads and then switch to gold or I think I'll just let the pinch beads be at random and then I'm going to alternate that so above that gold one one seed bead and then a red and then I'll switch to this side and do three seed beads and then another pinch bead so I'm just going to continue that little pattern and get uh, some length and then add in my coin bead to both strands. So let's go for a copper. Okay, sometimes it's easier to show than it is <laughs> to explain the pattern. But let me um, separate these two and just show you. So on this side, three seed beads, a pinch bead, one seed bead, a pinch bead, three pe seed beads, a pinch bead, one, and like that, and alternated on this side. I started with one, then a pinch bead, then three, and what that does is gives me two equal lengths in that pattern. So just give you a look at that. And I like to work in odd numbers. It's an old design principle. So I have done this with three, uh, I mean, sorry, with five pinch beads on each side. And now I'm gonna draw my two strands together and take my first Mille Fiori coin bead, find the hole, and just put both strands through the hole and bring it down to the gold, down to the gold seed beads. So it looks like that. And now when I come to this side, I'm gonna separate these strands again and do the exact opposite. On this strand, I finished with three. So I'm gonna put one, I'm gonna put one seed bead right there and then pick up a pinch bead and then three and I'll do that until I have five pinch beads on this strand. And then same thing on the other side. I'll start with three gold seed beads on this side. Okay, so my pattern kind of is looking like that. And I'm gonna draw these two together and add in another coin bead and I'm gonna continue stringing just like that and make get to my desired length um, I may have to make adjustments that's why I left this end uncrimped in case I need to shorten or lengthen um, I don't have a lot of this the pinch beads left because I really wanted the second project so I may even have to go in and make some adjustments with this pattern but that is my idea and I'm gonna just string this up off camera and I'll come back and show you how I worked out to get a six and three quarters to seven inch bracelet and how I'm gonna crimp this and finish it so it'll just be a second for you okay I'm cleaning up my mat I actually did have plenty of pinch beads for my length and have plenty left over I had to go back and I did the exact same pattern but I had to reduce my two strand section of my pattern to three pinch beads in between each of the coin beads and that gives me my perfect length by the time I put my little toggle clasp on, that um, is going to be perfect. So let's go ahead and crimp this. Uh, I have two of those number two crimp tubes from Softflex. Now, we got silver ones in our kit, but when you order them from Softflex, if you get a small quantity, they come in a little package like this, and I tend to dump them all into a large jar. I usually... Um, I usually buy a lot of them. So I'm going to feed on one of the tubes to both of my strands. And this is the beauty, I think, of Softflex. Like I'm using this beautiful garnet color 
And if you want to, you can make um, cut, fill this wire with seed beads and make your loop. But the soft flex wire is so pretty that you really don't need to do that. You can let it be part of the design, you know, let it be exposed. So if it's possible, I try to feed my wire back down through um, a bead or two so that I can trim down away from my clasp. And I just discovered something I was not thinking this would work because there's already two wires going through this Mille Fiori bead. But look, I made that loop, went down through the crimp tube, and I was able to get it to go back down through that Mille Fiori bead. That is so cool. That makes me so happy. And I'm just going to do a little small loop and leave this wire hanging out here. Uh, this end, I don't have to be too concerned about anything. Spacing is what I mean because um, the other end is still open. And I'm just going to place that tube in my magical crimping plier. And when I feel that it's right in the middle, just close it and go in the opposite direction and close it again and just go around a few times forming that tube into a bead. I love this plier. You could do a fold over crimp here too, but the number two crimp tubes that I have from Softflex Company are gold filled. So they're really high quality with a nice thick wall. And when I'm done and I take that away, I have this beautiful little gold bead and I think it's just amazing. And now I'm gonna trim away those ends as closely as I can. Okay, and now I'm gonna do the same exact thing on the other end, but this time I do wanna take a couple of minutes I tend to be a little bit of a fuss budget with my with my jewelry and I just want to make sure that this is not too rigid but also that I don't have any unwanted gaps. Um, as I said, it, the Softflex wire is absolutely amazing, especially if you match your color to your beads like this one is. If it peeks through a little bit here and there, it's beautiful. It just can be part of the design. But I do want this to lay flat to be really oh, it's so pretty it's so elegant um, completely different than the first project that I did with this kit Let's see before and trim And this beautiful little bracelet is done. I love it. It's not totally done. I have to put the clasp on and, and finish my little charm, but isn't that so sweet? I just love it. It even stacks nice with black um, because it has the red, gold, and copper. So pretty. Okay, so I took my little, um, my little glued together charm and I already coated this part with my permalac coating so that I can use my pliers to hold on to that and go ahead and give everything a coat. So if you are not familiar with this, it is the semi-gloss version. There is also a matte version. With the semi-gloss version, you can brush this over crystals, over enamel, um, you can brush it over everything and it will not cloud the crystals or cloud anything. And as I said, I did the inside of this charm before I glued it together because, um, you know, I didn't want it to be dark inside and me not be able to get to it. But this is easier than polishing your nails. And if you sell your work, this is so nice to type in your listings or put a little sign on your table at your craft fair saying that your metal findings all have an anti-tarnish coating. It's a big selling feature, especially where I live. I'm in Florida and it is humid here 
and it's hot. We always have moist skin that's coming in contact with our jewelry and an anti-tarnish coating is a big feature here. So I'm just going to set that down gently to dry, put the lid back on my, my coating and then let that set and dry while we put our, our toggle on. So I'm going to separate these two and I think I'm going to use the jump ring that came on this little set because it's gold plated. I'm going to use this to add that charm on. And then I made these jump rings out of the same wire that I'm going to be making a pendant out of. It's the Softflex Craft Wire, the 20 gauge, and this also has an anti-tarnish coating. So um, I really love their wire. I'm gonna put this on my thumb. It's a little bit more easy to control. Um, and I'm using these really tiny jump rings that I made with that wire for the T-bar part of my, um, oh, I'm going to put two on. Sorry, I'm talking and forgot my plan here. I'm going to put two on, um, and I may take one away, but I generally on the T-bar end of a toggle clasp, I generally put a little extra jump ring just to make it easy to turn it sideways and get it through the circle part of it. And just feed that on, close it really well. Look at that, it's so pretty. And I'm gonna use a little bit larger one for the round part, the flower part. work hard in my loops a little bit and just check my length and see if um, just see if I want to remove one of those junk rings but the reason that I did it is because um, you have to turn your t-bar sideways to go in and that um, makes it a little bit easier um, it also can add length but that's pretty perfect it also can add length um, but um, you know, I usually start with a little extra jump ring and I might want to turn that one because my pave side, let's see, I want my, um, these are not two sided, the micro pave side is only on one side so I guess I need to make sure when I put my bracelet on that I have the pretty side up on that, on that toggle clasp. But look at that, isn't that so pretty? And I will also take my Permalac coating, even though these are gold plated, and just brush it over everything. It will not cloud the crystals. And I'm going to come right here with the jump ring that I took from here. And instead of hooking it through my loop, I'm going to grab the whole circumference of my bracelet. Let's see if this is dry. The Permalac coating dries super fast and it is dry. And I love, I made this these two charms into one because now my charm, my dangle on my bracelet is a 360. No matter which way this spins around, I have beauty on all sides. And look at that stunning little bracelet, you guys. I love it so much. It is so elegant and just, it's festive, um, but not too chunky. You could really wear this alone or stack it with other things. I love it so much. I will put some pictures up at the end, but look how beautiful this turned out. Just beautiful. The soft flex wire and products are just unmatched. Okay, let's move on to this pendant. I am going to, I'll show you, I made a little start here and I did save out one of those beads. Let me clean up my mess here. So um, this is going to be a funky uh, wire, sort of wire tassel, I guess. <laughs> um, let me pull out the ones that don't have loops. So I just took some ball head pins from my stash. These are really fine gauge and I love them for this. And I just took, um, that one's not closed well enough, but I just took my um, pliers and you could use your one step looper if you want to, but um, I just took my, my pliers, I'll show you exactly what I did. And 
this is a two inch ball head pin but i wanted all my links so if i pull all my loops together and look at it i have varied links and i have even done a little bit of bending once these are connected i'll play with that further but um i'll show you if you use your one step looper um you get like um you get let, let me do a let me do a short gold one so I'm going to put this through the guide hole and wherever the back jaw of this tool is that's where it's going to cut and make a loop so I'm going to just gently close it so this little spike is going to be really short when I cluster them together so I want them all varied I want them random so I'll go right about there and these are not happy in this one step looper because they are so fine they they want to even like flip out of the tool um, so yeah, see, it's too fine. Um, so I've been doing them with my pliers. Let me fix this one. <laughs> Go ahead and make a loop here. And you know, the fun thing about what I'm doing here is this does not need to be neat because nobody's ever going to see these loops again. They're going to go inside a, a cone bead cap. So let me just fix this one and then I'll show you how to do them. Uh, I did one with the one step looper, but my ball head pins are just much too fine for the tool. It does not like it. And they do need to be, um, like everything, they do need to be closed really well because you don't want to lose them out of your pendant when it's all put together. I tend to work hard. And, and I'm just giving everything a little funky bend um, and I'll play with it more when it's connected so I just kind of repaired what the one step looper did but what I've been doing is at random um, and I'm gonna do let's see do these pretty short let me come up a little bit at random um, just putting a loop it almost looks like I'm about to wrap a loop but they need to be really small so I'm staying down on this end of my plier and it looks like I'm doing a wire wrapped loop, but I'm just doing simple loops and just, you know, get it centered. And like I said, they don't have to be neat or perfect because nobody's ever gonna see these loops again once this is all connected. But the most important thing is that they be closed really well. And so I'm just gonna do that to the last two and I did an odd number I think I did seven or did I do nine looks like nine um, I'm just it's a design principle I'm just used to working in odd numbers from all my years of interior design and it's just pleasing to the eye okay all my little loops are done and so now I'm going to take a piece of my 20 gauge soft flex wire and just smooth and warm and straighten and I need a loop that is big enough to hold all of these loops when I gather them up so I'm going to let's see um, pliers I'm going to just give this whoops give this a bend and this is another loop that no one will ever see so it doesn't have to be, you know, perfect, um, but it does have to be big enough to accommodate those and it has to be closed really well. And so I'm going to come to the furthest, the back part of this plier because it's cone shaped. So that's the largest loop that I'm going to get with these and just make a loop. And I want to make sure that it fits inside my cone and it does and I'm going to come with the flush side of my cutter right where the loop meets the core wire and snip and now I'm going to open this and just feed these on I do want to put one of my longer ones um, in the middle let me just line these up they are random and you know kind of fringy but let me just line them up so that when they're gathered on the loop, they, they look, you know, they look good. Okay. 
and just thread them on in that order. Okay, last one. Really important to close this really well. I don't want to lose any of my little fringiness. And now this is going to go inside this little cone, and I love that. But I am going to do a little bit of bending. I don't want them to be too straight. I want them to be a little bit wonky on purpose. And I can always do this after I'm done wire wrapping too. I want them to be kind of spiky and twisty. That one's too straight. That one's too straight. Oh, that is so cool. Okay, and now I'm gonna put my last little bead. And if you notice, I have a really long piece of wire here. I did that on purpose because I want this little coin bead to be facing forward and I want it to sit really nicely in the top of, in the top of this. So let me get everything as I want it. And I am going to do my loop front to back because this is a pendant and I wanna be able to run my chain through that way. So I'm gonna do that front to back. Um, my coin bead's gonna move until I get it secured, but I'm gonna put a 90 degree bend in there. And I need my bail making plier because I need this loop to be large enough. Let me show you, this is what I was wearing. This is one of my summer pendants. I do my loops really large on my pendants so that I can slip them off. Um, I'm gonna put this on this gold chain, but I need it to be large enough to go over one side of this chain. So I already know that that is the um, second to the largest bale on my bale making plier. Whoops, wrong way. Gotta wrap around the one I want. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put it in there and wrap that around just like a normal wire wrapped loop rotate that out of my way and just get it centered just take a minute to center that loop okay and when i take it away i have a nice big loop and i can even check i i know because i've made i've made so many pendants but i know that it goes through Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and do my wire wrapping. So this space right here where my plier was made the bend, that is going to accommodate my wraps. And I want to get this as I wrap down. Let me turn it this way. As I wrap down, I want to get my Mille Fiori bead facing the way that I want it. So at first it's not, at first it's going to move a little bit. And um, I'll show you why I have so much extra wire because I want to do a little creative wire wrapping right on top of the coin bead and secure it right to my uh, cone bead cap. And I'm just going to tighten up that coil a little bit if that ever happens to you. I'm talking and not really paying attention as well to my wrap as I normally would and it's not tight enough. So before I continue, I'm just pulling those coils up gently toward my loop. There we go. And straighten and now I can wrap down to my coin bead and as I get down to my last wrap I just want to make sure that I have everything facing the way that I want one more wrap in there okay Now I'm going to come here and come across my bead with that gold wire. I do want to make sure that my that everything stays in the direction that I want. I'm going to come across my gold bead and around to the back. So I just want to hold this so that it's facing forward. 
and I'm going to wrap around there. And before I keep wrapping, let me just adjust. And let's see, nylon jaw pliers are really helpful. So I have a little space there, so I'm just going to take my nylon jaw pliers and just um, snuggle that down to the top of my bead. Can even hold it with the nylon jaw pliers and get another wrap in there. <laughs> they are really useful when you're doing wire working. Okay, just center everything again. And now it is, I know you can't, um, you can't see it, but it's really secure. Like my coin bead is facing forward and I love that gold presence. Um, but I'm going to wrap a little bit more. I have the wire here and sometimes I give myself extra wire when I'm making a pendant like this just so that if I want to do like a coil or even more decoration at the end, see if I can get a hold, hard time getting a hold of it. And my advice if you um, want to try some wire work and it's really not your thing, I have always find that when I take the time to warm the wire in and go slowly, like do my bend slowly, it yields a much better result for me. And so what I think I'm going to do is lay that across like that. And I am going to make a tiny little spiral going upward on my flower bead, but that is way too much length for a tiny little spiral. So let's come, let me take about that much off and I'll take my round nose pliers now and I'm just going to spiral this way toward my pendant. So with the very tip of my round nose pliers, just make a tiny little loop and now I can just use my bent chain nose pliers and just push this in small increments against my finger. I'm just going to keep doing that, just coil it right up to my bead. One more bend. Maybe one more. I get a little bit closer. There we go. Perfect. And then from here, you know, when you make a spiral, you can decide if you want to uh, lay it down or up. And I'm going to go up because it won't show very well on my, on my gold bead cap. And nylon jaw pliers again, just so I can flatten it to my bead. Perfect. What a sweet little pendant. I love this. I love um, petite jewelry. I love this little pop of red. And so now I can see how everything is hanging and put some little funky bends in my downward rods because I do want them to kind of flare out. I don't want any of them to be too straight. So beautiful and so unique. Oh, I love this little pendant. That is so cute. And it looks so great with my um with my bracelet, which is one of my favorite things is a bracelet and a bracelet and necklace or I'm sorry, <laughs> a bracelet and earrings or a bracelet and pendant set. So I'm just going to take off this other pendant that I was wearing and just feed this on my little chain and I have a little set look at that so beautiful I just love it so fun this kit was amazing thank you to Softflex company for collaborating with me this is absolutely just so much fun to be able to get such elegant beautiful pieces of jewelry as well as my first piece which was just 
fun like a party necklace um, I just love these so I'll put some pictures up at the end check the description box for links I will link my cone bead cap that I used um, anything that I've used my favorite tools anything that I've used as well as a link to the Softlex company's website if you want to try to get their next kit but you can always go on the website and get all the colors of the 49 strand bead stringing wire and the magical crimps uh, the, the number two crimp tubes and the magical crimping plier all of that is on their website so I thank you so much for watching I hope everybody is safe and well and having fun on your beading mats ciao creative friends